Hello everybody, how are you all today? I hope you're well. <laughs> one of the lovely things, they're squealing in the background now, one of the really lovely things about gardening in an allotment is that you have neighbours and your neighbours become friends and some of them have shown up tonight. Let's go and see what they're up to. Whoop, life, I can hobble over there. Hold on a second. This is hobbling without a crotch. Who's in the kitchen? <laughs> it's, this is a really lovely sight of someone doing something in my kitchen and I'm not. What's happening? Can we get smelly vision? Hold on. Well, Let's have a going close. to be a mild wine from scratch here. Yeah? I do not show all the secret ingredients here. <laughs> this, is, this a, is this a traditional Austrian recipe? Well, there's so many different kinds of oh, recipes. I don't know, but I like this smell. We'll steam up. I wish you could smell it. It's starting to smell. It's just, it's only just gone on. It's starting to smell gorgeous. And we've got some other little bits and bobs of goodies here. Oh, I feel so, I feel so treated and spoiled. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I love the colours at this time of year. Just wonderful. And a Christmas ah, stolen. Stolen, do you like my accent? I don't see that. Oh, it's so lovely to oh, have folk around because I have been bored and... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. I was just saying how nice it is to have some company. Oh, oh he's a busy working. Oh here. my. Oh my goodness, Sean. That is something I never ever thought I'd see. We're busy working. You in a pinny. Are you going to cook something, Sean? The only thing he cooks up is trouble. Oh, I could go for the Nora Batty but look. It, oh, <laughs> you stop, stop referencing Nora Batty. <clears throat> yes, as I was trying to say, it's just so nice to have a bit of company after the last few days of being stuck in here on my own. And uh, But more than that, really nice to have um, some Glühwein. Have I said it correctly? Very good. Glühwein, which is well, which is to, like, Chris Market. Glühwein is Austrian for hangover. Uh, what is this? Rum. Let's have a look at it. Rum in a milk bottle. In oh, is this what you give to babies in Austria then? Yes. I'm just gonna have a little. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you like it. Does that go in with it? I thought you were giving yes, me that yes. to actually glug from no. the um, glug from the bottle. So that goes in the Glühwein. Oh, I can't It'll wait. Be even more. <laughs> It'll be, I'll be even more gluey. So we may catch up with you later after we've had a couple of glasses. It may be um, <laughs> it may be the most interesting slash disastrous video of the year. Tomorrow you are an absolute star. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> Have you had some already? <laughs> oh, brilliant. So what do you like to do? So, <laughs> that's my entertainment for the evening, it seems. We may catch up a little bit later. Okay, so, this is my bread knife. <laughs> yeah, it belonged to my great granny. Um, the handle was so brittle it snapped off. But it still works perfectly well. Anyway, in this summer, when my sister stayed before and after France, she couldn't believe the state of my bread knife. Tomorrow's just tried to have a go with it now, and obviously I've got the neck, and tomorrow hasn't. My sister dropped hints about maybe that's what I should have for Christmas. So, <laughs> it's a bit early for opening Christmas presents. I did get permission from my sister to open one post-surgery. So I'm just wondering... <laughs> oh, sister, thank you so much. <laughs> tomorrow, we're saved. Oh, oh sister. That's what a bread knife is supposed to look like. Yes, I can. <laughs> I can handle that better, I think. <laughs> so, goodbye to the uh, ancient bread knife from my great granny. Um, you see, I don't know what you're all complaining about. That bread knife was perfectly fine. Look, it's got a handle and everything. <laughs> it's actually got a handle. <laughs> Comparing? Yes, well, I think I'm handle it, but not quite. <laughs> so now we are talking. Oh my god! Look, it works! <laughs> oh wow! A it's like a bread knife that oh cuts my. bread. Who does yes. it? <sighs> As if cutting some butter. Fantastic. Beautiful. Drink too much of this and you'll be needing some of them. <laughs> 
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. We're getting in the mood. How is it? Oh, that's gorgeous. How do I say gorgeous in mm, Austrian? It's really good. Yeah, I like it. I'm happy. How do I say gorgeous in Austrian? Oh my God! What 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 do you say? Gorgeous. Good. She's been in England too long. Yeah, exactly. Is that good? Sehr yeah. gut. Sehr Schmeckt gut. Ausgezeichnet. Also, es ist sehr gut. Mm, Danke. Es ist sehr gut. Bitte. Beautiful. Mm. I don't say Happy Christmas in Austrian. You must remember that one. Frohe Weihnachten. That was too quick. Frohe Weihnachten. What she said. Frohe Weihnachten. Frohe Weihnachten. Yeah, I know. I always come over with some kind of Wagnerian kind of horned harpy when I'm trying to do an Austrian accent. No, there we go. Cheers, everyone. Next. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> um, we are playing ourselves some lovely Christmassy music tonight, but because of copyright reasons, no. we can't play it for you guys. So maybe if, while you're watching this, just hum a little Christmassy tune <laughs> out loud and you'll get the idea. Well, it's the morning after the night before. I feel quite good considering I had a lot of mulled wine. What a lovely evening it was, so special. I feel really blessed with the friends I have in my life and this bunch happened to be my allotment friends. What could be better? It was just, it was perfect. So um, Sean had to go off and do, he had some sort of meeting for the Borough Wide Allotment group. Uh, as he left, my neighbour Sheena arrived, my lovely neighbour Sheena, who you may have seen in some of the videos, and she turned up with her little two and a half year old granddaughter, who was so cute. We did loads of drawing and colouring, it was lovely. Um, got a phone call from Gary, who couldn't make it because he's absolutely flat out with a cold, but that's okay, we'll see Gary again on the plot soon. Um, and it just meant that there was more mulled wine to go around. It was just so lovely to firstly to have company, that was really, really nice. But also to have this lovely food and drink made for me and brought to me. I felt like a proper little sport princess, absolutely yummy. We had um, a sort of a cheese on toast type thing it's called raclette something other I've, oh, I've forgotten now but it was really yummy but the wine was really special with all of the different spices that Tamara had put in absolutely gorgeous and no hangover I'm amazed normally one sniff of red wine I've got a hangover so it's absolutely a perfect little evening to get me in the Christmassy mood um, and what was lovely I'm going to show you now is Sheena is so thoughtful she turned up with a little amaryllis for me because she thought I might like to actually have something to grow indoors while I'm stuck indoors. I'm so delighted. We're going to pop this up in a minute. Uh, it's kind of been tradition for years and years and years that when you go and visit someone, the plant or flower you take them at Christmas is a poinsettia. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, yeah. <coughs> Personally, I can't stand them. <laughs> I don't know why, I just find them such an ugly little plant. <coughs> Please don't ever buy me a poinsettia. Um, but in recent years, the amaryllis has become more and more popular as a little kind of gift to take to someone's house when you're visiting at Christmas. And I love them. I think they're kind of slightly bonkers on their long, long stem and then this burst of trumpet flower at the top. But I think they're lovely. and. It's like, it's great thinking from Sheena, it's so nice to actually grow something at this time of year. So you kind of see them everywhere these days. You go to the supermarket, all those kind of shops where you, you know, the Christmas biscuits and chocolates and bits and bobs, I'll be there in a minute, <laughs> um, are piled high. You see the amaryllis as well. So let's get on and pop this up. Then I can pop it in my lovely front window and get all excited when I see the first little green shoot showing and hopefully, seriously, who is honking their horn out there? Behave! <laughs> ah, city living, don't you love it? Um, hopefully, what I'm thinking is that by the time it's flowered, 
I'll actually be back to the garden, oh, which would be great. Anyway, in the meantime, let's get this one potted up. So most of them that are sold, they're kind of sold as a little kit, which should include everything we need to get this little baby going. Okay. So it looks like we've got the actual bulb itself. Precious. And then, oh, it looks very, very dry. A bag of, um, a bag of, sort of compost and a pot. And I thought this might be the case. I've just snatched up an old um, saucer to stand it on because it's got quite big holes in the bottom. So when I'm watering, it's going to go everywhere if I don't um, put a saucer underneath. I'm really delighted to get this this year because I have had them over the years and when they're done, when they're kind of over in sort of like the end of February, beginning of March, I normally cut them down a bit, let them die back and then lift the bulbs and then store the bulbs. Now, not the winter just gone, but the winter before, I had about five or six bulbs stored in the shed and over the winter something managed to get into the shed and nibble the lot so unfortunately i lost all my previous amaryllis bulbs so i'm delighted to have this one okay so let's get the compost in or oh, scissors it's really 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 dry this compost so i'll give it a really good soak once it's all in I'll tip that gonna make a mess Gonna make a big mess, never mind. Making mess is fun. So now I'm gonna make a little hole for it because look at this, these beautiful roots that are just dying to get going. I don't want to just shove it into the soil really hard um, because I could damage the roots. So I'm gonna make a nice little hole for it and gently ease it in. And then you want the soil to come up about three quarters so I'm just going to give that a firm down so unlike say your daffs and, and the other bulbs you put in the garden that you're sinking right below the surface of the soil the amaryllis wants to sit just a little bit proud and that's it so I'll give it a jolly good watering probably what I'll do I might actually just stand it, um, stand the whole thing in a bowl of water like that so the water can wick up rather than water from the top because what I don't want to do before it's actually getting away is to soak the bulb and then end up having the bulb rot. So yeah, we'll stand that in a big bowl of water, let it have a good old drink and enjoy the prospect of watching it grow. Where are you all? Oh, I need to get a new, um, what do you call it, tripod. This one's so cronky and creaky. And, uh, give it a good old um, shove there. So, yeah, so for the rest of the day, I'm going to clear up after last night. I'm going to carry on sorting through lots of gorgeous photographs from this year in the garden. I've taken so many pictures, more than I've ever taken before. But it's been great. I've tried to make myself sort of photograph every time I'm in the garden because things change so much. You know, in the, in the sort of the big picture of things, you sort of get to the end of the year and you think, what have I done? How have I ended up spending so much time in my garden? But when I look back to the beginning of the year, before I'd even dug that little bed out, bed out by, say, the cold frame. At the beginning of the year, I had four one-ton sacks of spoil from underneath the shed where I dug it out last summer. Those sacks, I had to sift through every single ounce of it to separate glass and rocks and rubbish from the lovely soil, which I then added to the top beds for the carrots and the parsnips. So I'm really, really glad that I've been taking so many photographs this year. And of course, filming on the plot too, because it sort of, I think in a way, it sort of gives you that kind of, oh, for next year. When you see just how far you can come in a year, it gives you that impetus for next year. Like, oh, what can I do next year? So 
I'm always, always planning for the garden. Even in the summer, I'm starting to think about the following year. So I've drawn up a rough plan about 10 times. <laughs> um, I think I've kind of finalised it now. So what I might do in a couple of days is sit down with you all and show you my plan. I'll try and draw it on some big bits of paper so it's, you know, easy to see on the camera. Um, because I'm super excited, I need to cement my plan <laughs> because I've got to stop changing it. Oh, who knows? Who cares? I might change it again. But hopefully I can go through that with you all uh, in a few days. But in the meantime, like I say, I'm going to carry on sorting out all my gorgeous photographs from this year. The best ones are going to be set aside and I'm going to use them to make a calendar for my mum because she, she loves gardening too and she loves veggies and I think there's so many which have such beautiful colours in them. I think she'll really enjoy that. So I've got my work cut out today, haven't I? I'd better say cheerio and get a wriggle on. I hope you are all having a wonderful time whatever you're up to. I know some people are now under a few inches of snow so the garden has become an absolute no-no but whatever you're doing have some fun with it. Happy prepping for the holidays and for Christmas or if you're down under happy sunbathing and days at the beach. I'm so jealous. In the meantime take care please everyone and I will see you all again really soon I hope.